Alrighty. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, well, this is kind of a emergency impromptu recording here. I just, um, this video here came up on my YouTube recommendations, and um, I got about halfway through here, as you can tell. This, But what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stay there. But um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll do commentary on this one. But I found this video to just be utterly awesome. So I, I'm kinda, I was kind of going through this whole video here and kind of checking off the appropriate boxes, so to speak. And um, the, the, but I think I found, but I think I found one of my muses right here. This guy, I don't even know who he is, but he just, he kind, he, he reminds me so much of myself. So, so I, this is, this is probably, probably gonna be me like, thirty years from now, assuming I live that long. But like I said, I'm gonna be doing some uh, commentary throughout this. Like most adults, I was pretty sure I didn't. All right, I gotta, I gotta do a sound check first, so I'll be, I'll be rewinding this back. Ah. Not have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Honestly, I was confident because I knew, as everyone else knows, ADHD looks like this. <laughs> then I found out what ADHD actually is. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe just a tad. Alright, so I don't want to... Okay. Like most adults... I was pretty sure I did not have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Honestly, I was confident because I knew, as everyone else knows, ADHD looks like this. <laughs> yeah. Then I found out what ADHD actually is. But yeah, um, but for the longest time, I never thought I had schizophrenia because I'm used to, I'm used to schizophrenics basically People acting like Andy Kaufman and uh, and uh, Jim Carrey, you know, they just they're you know the split personality types. They you know they they act like a bunch of different people, like oftentimes on the fly. But no, it ain't like that. Schizophrenics can also be like uh, people like Daniel Johnston and Rocky Erickson. You know, you can't you can't really tell just by looking. Um, but yeah, ADHD is kind of like that too. It it's just what he said. You know, there's there's a big myth surrounding those. They think that, you know, people with ADHD, they just run around and act all crazy and silly and stuff. But no, it ain't, it ain't always like that at all. I mean, but anyway. And suddenly, my life made complete sense. Okay, it made more sense. The <laughs> good, the bad, and the buggy. Like the tags on the shirt, the buggy, yep. or noisy rooms, restaurants. Yep. Yep. Um... I'm, yeah, but I'm like that too. That's one of the reasons why I I gotta go with tagless shirts, because having that shirt just scratch my back, just drag, drag, or eventually uh, if if I do buy a if I do buy a tag shirt, I'll I'll personally I'll do it when I get home. So I'll grab that tag, just rip the sucker right off. Um, I think there was something else I did too. Can't remember what. Yeah, must not have been important. He's going and I'm trying to have a conversation and there's just if you do have undiagnosed ADHD but you're really hoping you don't well let me calm your fears because here for your edifice. all right I gotta oh, shoot I don't know if I'll be able to do this okay I have to from my end I gotta turn it up a little bit oh and I forgot to mention too I'm gonna try to make this quick because uh, I have to leave for work here in about a half an hour or so. Location are 10 signs that you do not have ADHD. None of them are certain, but they do add up. Number one, you feel like you are living up to your potential. Uh, so many adults. Oh. 
I don't I don't proclaim to be a bona fide artist or anything like that, but uh, I know uh, from from what I hear other artists say, their all of their works are never done. There was always something they could do better, or there was always something that that they messed up on that they could have improved on, et cetera, et cetera. That I'm in that I'm in that category as well. With undiagnosed ADHD, feel I'm underachieving, regardless of how much they've achieved. Despite co-writing, co-starring, and producing hundreds of episodes of TV and radio, oh, on damn. Own, I always felt like I'm not living up to my potential. One reason people with ADHD feel this way is because it's often true. It's kind of hard to achieve your best when you have the equivalent of four conversations blaring in your head 24-7. And yep, yep, and that's, um, and I believe that's a key component of schizophrenia as well. I mean, even... I mean, especially in a place like work, where it's, I've done it for so many years, it's just routine, I could practically do it without really thinking about it, that's, that's when the convo starts, so, it uh, it's also one of the reasons, well, it's, it was one of the reasons why I like streaming, like streaming and gaming and stuff like that, because it helps me, it helps me focus, focus on the game and focus on the camera, that kind of thing, so, it kind of, it, Helps me get out of my head. So, but yeah, he's... That. The equivalent of four conversations blaring in your head 24-7. And someone who's really important to you is sharing something very important for them. And you really want to get what they're saying. And then and it, and it's very hard to pay attention to someone's intrusion. Number two, do you finish tasks and projects on time? Um... Um, once upon a time, I was like this. Um, at my job, Walmart, we we do we do work under a deadline. So, it's I guess another way of looking at it is we do complete. I mean, if uh if everything goes according to plan, then yeah, everything gets done on time. But there's times where it doesn't. But we're always trying to get shit done on time. He, he, he kind of elaborates further on this later, though. Wow, what's that like? Number three, your finished projects are actually finished. They are nope. full of little mistakes or missing parts or they address the wrong problem. Um, just like earlier, um, I'm not saying I'm a 100% true artist or anything like that, but uh, nothing I do is ever perfect. I mean, there's always there was always something that went wrong. Um, there was always a way that I could have improved on something, but he kind of said the same thing here. My work is never done. Because we left it to the last moment and then didn't read the instructions. Or, number four, you read the instructions and then followed them. You did not. Okay, that... Um, usually, these, especially these days, I'll look at instructions and just, just kind of skim over them. I mean, usually all I need now is just like kind of a rough draft of, like if I'm stuck, um, like um, like at my job where I have to find specific products on the shelf. Oftentimes they're extremely hard for me to find because there's like so many different flavors of like burritos, where there's like an umpty zillion different types of, like an umpty zillion types of like broccoli. There's like all these different brand names and stuff, and they're not always conveniently together, and they're not in alphabetical order. So, it's very confusing for me, for me to find this stuff. So, I, at my job, we, we often have this uh, handheld device that if we, we beep the item, it'll tell us exactly where it is. Um, but even with this, for the most part, all I really need is just a general, uh, general area of where it is, and then I'll, I'll probably find it. But yeah, it's kind of what he's saying here too. I mean, these especially these days, if I'm reading instructions on what on what to do, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't do it. Usually, I just, if they, especially if they have pictures, I'll just look at the picture. Oh, okay, okay, and then go to it. But yeah, I definitely get what he's saying here. Boring. I have a better idea. Number five. You read the instructions and started the project and did not get sidetracked. <laughs> I think I stopped or no I didn't stop here but this is probably one of the biggest reasons this is probably one of the biggest reasons why I don't uh, I don't write shopping lists 
Because, uh, one, first off, I have to actually remember to write it. Which I often don't. I mean, oh, no, I need, oh, no, I'm running out of this. I got to go to the grocery store. Pew, off I go. You know, you know, totally ignorant of the fact that, uh, there's probably other stuff I needed. And, two, if I actually do write one, there's, t you know, there's times where I'll forget to write something down that I needed. And, three, even if I actually do remember to write it down, um... If I, even if I actually wrote everything I needed down in that shopping list and get down to the grocery store, then I found out that I forgot to bring my list. And then, for the times where I actually did remember to bring my list, I'll, I'll often forget to actually grab the stuff and come back home and find that, no, I forgot to buy this at the, you know, I forgot to buy this and this. And for the times where I actually remember to bring a pen with me to cross off the stuff that I grabbed, I'll cross stuff off, even when I never even actually grabbed it. So it just, so it just, it just doesn't work for me. So yeah, I don't write lists for this reason. It's a total waste of my time, waste of effort. Did not get sidetracked. You did not end up at the fabric store buying twenty yards of chintz or something that you've forgotten you needed it for, and then five days later, two days after it's due, you find. The <laughs> I do this. <laughs> also, this is where it was. Oh, God. Sure would have been nice to have a week ago when I really needed it. Numerous times throughout my life. And now you can't find the instructions and you can't remember what they said. And so you winged it and it kind of turned out okay. <laughs> several times oh god um one bright shiny example i'll be like i'll be uh, unloading like the frozen food truck and then shortly after a manager come in how many pals did we have I, 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 you would think i would know this i mean i had just unloaded this truck but uh, uh, uh several um like um seven ish but yeah that that was totally me right there number seven Someone who knows you well suggests you seem really scattered lately. Late? I wish. ADHD is driven by genes, so unless you've had a head injury, it's present. Um. Head injury? No, but I've been backhanded. Pre uh, okay, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. I might be opening a can of worms when I say this, but no, but I have been backhanded by my dad pretty hard, though. I mean, he, with with him, I don't recall me ever being spanked. No, cause um, my dad usually gets into full on rages. He's not, he's not a psychopath. He's not psychotic. Um, he's just volatile with a short temper. You know he, you know you really, you know you really piss him off or something. But he doesn't just go to your room. Come on, you know, pick you up and no, his is. <laughs> Like the full-on red face, just the, the full wind-up. BAM! So, that's happened a few times when I was a kid. So, so in the context of what she's talking about, maybe that's how I got it. But again, I'm not trying to... I mean, I'm not trying to call him out or air out his dirty laundry or anything like that. Or I'm not trying to expose him or stuff like that. But yeah, the head trauma part, maybe that's where I got it from. Where is... I've been distracted, restless, and tuned out ever since I found out that I'm adopted and that my real parents are Bill and Melinda Gates. <laughs> then being tuned out is only a problem. And I could be just overwhelmed by a new job, a divorce, losing a pet, losing a loved one, basically any life crisis or an ongoing crisis like pandemic. If you're struggling with ADHD symptoms lately, if you're not your usual self, 
that's probably not ADHD. Although it might be you've been coping really well and eventually just took on too much and bam, you hit the wall. But this is me at work. Believe it or I mean, believe it or not, um, I work the overnight shift at Walmart. I'm a overnight stock clerk. It's not just, it's not 100% total brain dead work. At least not the job that I do. I mean, because a lot of things are going through my head. And again, it's not, you're not sitting in an office. You know, just, you know, mindless menial stuff like that. At least not completely. I mean, at my job, there's a, you know, I have to, okay, this goes here, this goes here. Okay, I got to put this over here. Um, yeah, I gotta put this here. Um, I have to, you know, okay, um, oh, let's see, where are these? Oh, these are all down here, so I'll, uh, uh, um, I'll just leave them, I'll just stack them over here for the moment. Okay, so they're out of the way now. Okay, this goes here. This goes here. Um, okay, this doesn't go over here. This goes way the hell down here, so I'll set this here, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, stack, uh, move these, and then I'll go ahead and push this down here, and then I'll, I'll take care of these, and then, um, I'll, you know, but I, it, it's basically... It's an all it's an all night sliding puzzle is what I is what I'm going through. You know, I gotta get to here. You know, I gotta get to here. But in order to get to here, I have to move. I have to move this over here. Then I gotta move this down here. Then I gotta move. You know, then I gotta move this over here. And then I have to move this back here. You know, it, 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 again, it's it's an it's an all night sliding puzzle that I have to go through. So, it, so and so it again it, and I totally forgot what my original what my original subject was. Good old ADHD for you, but anyway, you kind you guys kind of get the idea. I mean, my job isn't just stupid menial stuff, but what um, a good chunk of what he's talking about here stems from my job. So you, you, you so I'm pretty much left. I'm I left. I'm pretty much left as though I've been in the washing machine all night, just run around and agitated, and and then after you know, and then after it's all over, I'm just kind of. Kind of stopping wet, that kind of thing. So, generally, you don't fall into and bounce back from ADHD. It is our yes. baseline for as long as yes. you can remember, or as long as someone and, knows. And you. again, much of this, much of this stems from me doing the kind of job that I do for so many years. So, remember, because our memory is often not that great. That eighth sign that it's not attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Wash, dry, fold, iron, and then put away the clean laundry in one day. There are things. Um, I'm kind of in the middle on this. I mean, there's um, I have laundry. You know, I have a laundry day one day a week. Um, but you know, I gotta you know pay my bills on time, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle. Some things I'm neat and orderly on. Other things I just like if my, if my garbage fills up. I don't immediately pack it up and say, you know, send it on its way. There's times where it'll sit there and pile up, and it'll sit there for like weeks like that, you know, that kind of thing. You know, there's times I wanna, you know, I'll want, you know, especially after work, you know, I kind of, I should kind of take a shower. There's times I've just said, yeah, fuck it, and just go lay down, and then going to work the next day is stinky. So I've, I've done that as well. Hanging everywhere or crumpled or waiting to be folded, waiting to be hung up or neatly folded but never put away. Basically, if you finish what you start, whether it's replacing a light bulb or earning your college degree, <laughs> yeah, all right, that's a four year commitment right there. I gave up after the first month, I have ADHD. Step by step in the right order, and you like that. We don't. Don't get me wrong. I guess um, uh, but I guess I'm probably most most neat and orderly at work. Again, we're on a deadline. There's certain we have to do th certain things a certain way. So yeah, that's that's what I'm most orderly. At home, I'm for the most part a slob. So. Step in the right order, and you like that. We don't. Don't get me wrong, I do try to do things in the right order, but... Like I said, I'm most... Way, welcome up. I'm most orderly at work. And at home, I'm... At home, I'm pretty chaotic. 
Oh, and the, I think this is this part here is what prompted me to stop this video and do commentary on it. I step in the right order, and you like that. We don't. Don't get me wrong. I do try to do things in the right order, but. Oh, by the way, welcome. Uh, I'm Rick Green. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is especially after work. Especially, I mean, especially after work. I'm. I mean, I'm like, I can be like this at work too. But that, again, because so many things, so many certain things had to be done in certain ways, and since, in there's a deadline tacked on top of this. Uh, basically, actively remembering something requires me to forget something else. I don't have much of a, I don't have much of a of, of a mental capacity. So again, in order for me, Actively, you know, um, basically, I only have so much refrigerator space. I can only put so many post-it notes on that refrigerator. If I have to remember something, something at random is going to have to get taken off that refrigerator to be replaced by something else. So, you know, I, so yeah, but I totally get what he's saying here. It just, you know, again, I don't. I don't have the mental capacity to remember every single thing in the existence, so. I should explain. I was a moderately successful comedian. And then I was diagnosed midlife. Midlife, I lived to be 94. <laughs> 94 is a stretch because, according to a number of studies, uh, we actually live 10 years shorter lives than our normal. Um, it was the neurotypical friends and family. Why? Well, depression, anxiety, frustration, car accidents, not taking care of ourselves, eating too much, all of the impulsive stuff. Yep. Sign yep. Junk food addict here. And uh, I've said this in other videos. I'll go ahead and say it here. But um, back in the day, I weighed, I weighed as much as 260. I was a ma I was a massive pig, but it, that in a way that was caused by before then I was I was um living under a, a bottle a bottle a day mini thin addiction. For those that don't know, mini thins are basically amphetamine tablets. They're famous among truck drivers. They take them so they can stay awake while driving. Um, I was going through about a bottle a day. Um, a bottle for those that don't know is about a hundred. Um, I would again a hundred. 100 mini fins a day, and then most of this was due to the fact that I lived in my car. Like once in a while, I'd get a hotel room if I could afford it, but no, most most of my life was spent living in the car. Um, fast forward to somewhere in the future when I got my first apartment, since I had a place to hang my head now. Is that right? Hang my a place to hang my hat. Excuse me. Um, now that I had that, I didn't have to pop the pill so much. Or I no, my car was also a Ford Fairmont with bench with uh, bench seating, not very comfortable to sleep on. So, anyway, got my apartment. Didn't need the pills so much because I have an actual place to sleep. Uh, but once the pills went away, that got replaced with food because I had an appetite I never knew I had. Just started, <laughs> started binging and gorging and all that stuff. So it's basically an addiction that I can never, I have never been able to completely get rid of. Um, at one point, I did manage to get my weight down from 260 to 210. As of about a few years ago, a few years ago, I managed to get, through a concerted effort, I managed to get that weight from 210 to 140. Uh, mostly through food denial, dieting, um, and um, towards the latter end there, intermittent fasting. Once I did, once I got that up, but after a few months of that, eventually, I snapped. And I went through a week-long junk food binge uh at least three of those days i was eat i was eating a large i had a large pizza some donuts cookies all of it in one sitting oh and um uh, it's kind of an appetizer before then i was doing something i hadn't done in years eat at burger king um ate there a few times i think i ate there a few times probably a excuse me a few times during my uh week-long junk food binge basically i went all out or all in, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, but after that week was over, I I had to go back to my old ways. So, 
So no, so I think that's my story right there, the whole thing. Um, uh, but anyway, I um I have to cut it off here. This video went grossly over long. I have to start getting ready for work now. And oh hell. Still got a half eaten sandwich. But like I said, the I got about halfway through this video. I'm like, I have to do a video on this. So so again, I'll go ahead and cut it off here. Um, because once again I gotta I gotta get dressed, I gotta get ready for work and all that, so I definitely won't overlock. But otherwise, especially if you made it this far, people, thanks for watching and see you all next time.